Okay, hi guys. Today, I'll be discussing Unit Junction Transistor UJT Application and Sample Problems Part 1. Okay, problem number 1. If the UJT has RB1 of 6.2 kilo ohms and an RB2 of 2.2 kilo ohms, what is its standoff ratio? So, to recall this concept, here is the equivalent circuit diagram of a UJT. So recall that inside the UJT, uh, there's an equivalent two resistors here, RB2 and RB1, and between them, there's an intersection where there's an equivalent diode. And particularly for UJT, we are using the reference silicon diode with the voltage drop of uh, 0 0.7 volts. So getting back to this concept, uh, if we apply a voltage supply across the UJT, which is VBB, uh, we, we can uh, get a voltage drop across the RB1 or the resistor at base 1 and that is equivalent to NVBB. And here, N or eta, that is the intrinsic standoff ratio which is the property of UJT. And recall that the formula for eta, or for the standoff ratio, is actually the ratio of RB1 versus the total resistance across this uh, UJT, or RB1 all over RB1 plus RB2. Now to solve this problem, so the solution is using the formula that was given, N equals to, or eta equals to RB1 over RB1 plus RB2. We will just substitute the given RB1 of 6.2 kilo ohm and RB2 of 2.2 kilo ohm, and we will be able to solve the value of 0 0.738, and that is the final answer for sample problem number one. Okay, let's proceed to sample problem number two. A data sheet of a certain UGT gives standoff ratio of 0 0.6. Determine the peak point emitter voltage VP if VBB is equal to 20 volts. And another question here, how can the peak point emitter voltage of a UGT can be increased? So we'll uh, return back to the circuit we used a while ago. So we want to determine VP. Uh, VP is actually an emitter voltage. So therefore, that is the voltage from the emitter up to the ground. Or in this illustration, that is VE, V1, from emitter to base 1. So we should be concentrating on the voltage loop or the current loop around this uh, circuit. And if you will recall the principle of a UGT, the voltage at the emitter is actually varying from... Uh, lowest to highest point, which are the valley point and the peak point. And for this sample problem, we are asked to determine the peak point or the VP. And that is the maximum value based on this diagram. So if we will gonna use KBL around this loop, that is VE or in this case V peak is equals to the voltage across the diode VPN plus the voltage across RB1. So following that loop, we will derive at this equation that VP equals to NVBB plus VPN. And to solve, so we're just going to use that formula and substitute the given. So take note that the VPN here is the voltage across the equivalent diode or a silicon diode with a voltage drop of 0.7 volts and we will be able to solve VP equal to 12.7 volts and that is the final answer and for the follow-up question how can the peak point emitter voltage of a UGT be increased so going back to the formula VP can be increased by either increasing N or eta and that is actually the property of the UGT, we must select the proper UGT with a higher eta or standoff ratio 
or we can also increase VBB, which is the supply voltage across the UGT. Okay, let's proceed to sample problem number three. If the UGT in the given figure has a standard ratio of 0 0.55 and an externally applied voltage of 20 volt, what is the peak voltage? And this is the equivalent circuit that was given. So for the solution recall, uh, a while ago we have already derived that the formula for V peak is equals to standoff times VBB plus VPN. However, if we will check back the, the circuit here, we, we could not directly apply the given formula derived ago, a while ago since uh, there is an, another external resistor R2 added in series with the UGP. And if we will get the equivalent circuit of this part, we will gonna have this equivalent circuit where in the inside the UGT, there is the VPN or the equivalent diode, RB2 and RB1. And RBB is the sum of RB2 and RB1, which is 5 kilo ohm. Uh, if we will check the formula, NVB here is just the voltage across RB1 based on our previous derivation. But to get VP, we need a KVL here which will pass through this diode and the series connection of RB1 and RB2. So we are more of concerned about a new variable here which is V2. So thus, uh, we will no longer apply this formula but instead, V peak should be equal to V2, the voltage drop across the series RB1 and R2, plus VPN, which is 0 0.7 volt. But how to get V2? If we will check here, V2 is the voltage drop across RB1 and R2, and we could derive that from voltage divider across all resistors supplied by the 20 volts VBB. And using the voltage divider rule, V2 is equal to voltage across RB1 plus R2 all over the total resistance across the series a connection which is RB2 plus RB1 plus R2. However, we were not given with RB1 and RB2. Instead, we were given with the total RBB of 5 kilo ohm. So to determine RB1 and RB2, we will recall the formula RB1 equals to eta or standard ratio times RBB. And substituting the given uh, 0 0.55 volts and uh, 0 0.55 and 5 kilo ohm, RB1 is 2.75 kilo ohm. Now, if we get RB1 and RBB is 5 kilo ohm, we can easily determine RB2, which is equal to 5 kilo ohm minus RB1, which is 2.75 kilo ohm. And RB2 is therefore 2.25 kilo ohm. And since we already have the value of RB1, RB2, and now we can determine V2 and solve for VP. So uh, I, I have an equivalent circuit here where I already updated the values of RB2. RB1 and R2. We'll just substitute the given and calculate and we will be able to solve the value of 11.876 volts. And that is the final answer. Okay. That's all.